Hello and welcome back to my writing channel. I decided to do something a little bit fun and off the beaten path today. I have done a video like this before on my lifestyle, like main channel, about 20 I think random facts about me, but today I thought it would be fun to do a few fun facts. I decided on 13. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's almost October and I'm kind of feeling in the Halloween-y spirit. Or maybe it's just because I, you know, wrote 13 down and ran out of ideas, so you're gonna get 13 fun facts and not 20. So I've compiled a little list of a few random things about my past writing or my past writing habits, just kind of my writing background in general, that I thought would be kind of interesting to share with you today. I would love it if in the comments below you would leave me a few things about your writing past as well, funny habits you may have had or how you got started writing maybe. Fact number one. The very first things that I wrote were short stories that were basically knockoffs of Nancy Drew. I was absolutely obsessed with Nancy Drew when I was a kid. I still am to some extent because I still play the, the computer games. I still really like the computer games. Even though I know who the bad guy is and I played them a million times, I will still play them. But as a kid, I devoured the books. I loved the computer games. Everything Nancy Drew, I was there for it. I think I used to write them by hand, but then I would type them out on my dad's computer. Computer, I would print them out and bind them and give them to family. I had three main characters that were all completely based on Nancy Drew. My main character looked different from Nancy Drew but had the same personality and my two side characters were basically Bess and George. It was a difficult day when I understood the concept of plagiarism. When I was still really young I also used to write movie scripts but instead of writing them for people I would write them with a cast of my Barbies, my sisters and my Barbies and our dolls. I was very serious about it too. I would type it out on a computer, I'd print it out, a copy for me, a copy for each of my sisters. The cast would all include all of our favorite Barbies and I would set up the camera, I also was the director and the producer. I'd set up the video camera, I would stage everything, I would do the action call, and then we would act out the scenes with our Barbies from the script, and I would edit it all together. I think I was using Windows Movie Maker at that point. It was before my family got our first Mac. I was very serious about it, and actually sometime in my early teens, I did consider script writing, screenwriting, um, but I really never have taken off in that direction as an adult. At the time that I'm recording this video, in fall 2020, I have written four complete novels. Novels. The first one I wrote from about the age of 13 to 17. It went through a lot of changes as I was growing as a writer and figuring out what writing actually was. I was starting to actually study writing. The second one was a pseudo sci-fi kind of still fantasy novel that I wrote when I was in university. It was better, but it was still pretty bad. And the third novel was the one that I've talked a lot about online, especially on my last channel because I was still starting to make writing videos on my now lifestyle channel. That one, which was titled Legend says was by far the most transformative writing experience and writing project that I've ever done. I learned so much when writing Legend Says. The jump in my skills and my knowledge about writing and my confidence in my writing between that second novel and the end of that third novel after I'd done all those revisions is just incredible. I'm not saying the book is incredible. I actually put that project aside for now because I realized it just had too many flaws, too many things that I wasn't really ready to address. Of course, the fourth novel, you guys know, it's the one I've been talking about on this channel and that is my Eliana story as I'm calling it right now. I have a first full draft and I'm almost, almost done with my revisions. I still have quite a bit of the reread left. You can see the video up here, no here, if you want to see a little bit more about what I'm doing with that novel right now. Of those four novels, they are all single point of view from the perspective of a young female protagonist. Maybe I should branch out in a future project, but I'm kind of on a roll here. And all but one of those protagonists has a first name that ends with an A. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I actually didn't even realize it until I was planning this video and I started thinking about random similarities and differences between my novels and I realized I have four names and only one of them doesn't end with an A. I wrote the majority of that second novel, the pseudo sci-fi, pseudo fantasy one, at a Panera Bread Company over a summer between university semesters. It was probably the fastest I have ever drafted and it was fueled by a lot of caramel lattes. I had already started it during the spring semester and then when it got to summer, I just got on a roll and I started writing almost every single day. I started going to Panera a lot of those days and I finished the first draft at a Panera Bread Company. I specifically remember sitting in my customary booth with probably the end of my caramel latte and writing the end. When I was a kid, I was absolutely obsessed with a very specific look, red hair, green eyes, freckles. 
absolutely loved it. And that showed in a lot of my writing because a lot of my early short stories, even throughout my teen years, I would often write characters that had this look and they were always characters who were portrayed in a good light. They were never the bad guys. As I got older, I specifically pushed myself away from this look and I pretty much completely stopped writing characters with this look, even side characters and background characters, because I just associated it so heavily with my early writing and my immature writing, kind of like you would a childhood nickname that you decide you no longer like or a certain thing you used to wear, or how you used to do your hair and you just associate it with your childhood and you want so badly to get away from it when you're in your kind of teens and, and early 20s. And so I really just pushed that aside and I did not write characters like that. For my bachelor's degree, I went to a mid-size US university and I studied English literature with a minor in creative writing. And pretty much I think the only reason I didn't major in creative writing was simply because this university didn't offer creative writing as a degree. They offered a minor, but they did not offer a major. I ended up doing English and I definitely do not regret it. I also have a master's degree. After my bachelor's, I ended up moving to the UK and I went to Bristol University in England and I studied English literature with a specialization in Romantic and Victorian literature. And I wrote my master's dissertation. I think we call it thesis in the US for master's level, but it was called dissertation for a master's in the UK. And I wrote it on Elizabeth Gaskell novels. I did very seriously consider doing a master's in creative writing. And I even went so far as to apply for two or three programs, I think, in the US. They were all extremely competitive. My writing wasn't great at the time and I was rejected from every single one of them. It was during this time that I was really starting to realize the difference between literary fiction and mainstream or genre fiction. All these different categories exist, but literary is kind of in a bubble of its own. And all the programs that I applied for, and I think the majority of university programs, are heavily focused on literary fiction. And I don't really like writing literary fiction. I did it for my creative writing minor for my bachelor's degree. Um, and I enjoyed some aspects of it. And I learned a lot from the classes that I took that were focused on literary fiction. I learned a ton, definitely don't regret it, but I generally just don't enjoy writing literary fiction as much as I enjoy writing genre fiction. And I was starting to kind of see and understand the distinction with literary fiction specifically versus what I wanted to write as I was doing my bachelor's degree and my creative writing minor and then around the time that I was actually applying for those master's degree programs in creative writing I was really starting to realize it was not actually what I wanted to do. As far back as I can remember, I have always been obsessed with grammar. It's one of those things that has just always come quite naturally to me and I internalize it very quickly and I hold on to it. The rules just become very solidified in my head very easily. Not all subjects are like that, but grammar is one of those things that just completely clicks in my brain. This has gotten me actually in a little bit of trouble with my writing in the past and I'm only now kind of starting to come to terms. I say now, the past few years really, I've started to break those rules that as a young writer, I just couldn't get myself to break. The grammar rules just made too much sense in my head. So things like starting a sentence with a conjunction, starting with but, for example, grammatically, it's not right. Of course, in fiction, we can do that. You know, it's a rule that we can break. Same with, for example, a very thoughtful and intentional sentence fragment that can be used very skillfully in writing to kind of form the rhythm of your sentences. It's great, it's wonderful, it's grammatically incorrect. So as a young writer, I would never do these things. I wouldn't start a sentence with a conjunction, I would not do a run-on sentence, I would not do a sentence fragment, I would be very careful about all of my commas and things to the point where sometimes my dialogue wasn't necessarily as smooth as it could be because I was trying so hard to follow my grammatical rules. I have always, always wanted to be able to draw my main characters, my settings, the places, the fantasy objects and things like that that I have in my stories. I have always wanted to be able to sketch those. Even just a super, super basic sketch with no color and nothing else, just a pencil sketch. But I am terrible. I mean, terrible. It is just not something that comes naturally to me at all. I have never taken actual formal sketching or, or drawing classes or even painting, but I have watched some tutorials when I was a kid. I had some art books that I would sometimes try to follow. It's not something that I necessarily haven't been interested in or haven't wanted to improve my skills in. See, ending with the preposition. Here's me just breaking grammar rules all over the place. But I'm just so bad. Even as a kid, I would lose patience. That's another thing that I just kind of kind of one of my faults is I'm a little bit impatient at times. I do still occasionally sketch like outlines of places, for example, like sort of layouts of buildings. But when it comes to ambiance things, when it comes to the characters in my books, I just go to Pinterest or I search online and I find images of either real places and people or images that are drawn by people way more talented than me. 
I am the only one in my family who writes fiction. Everyone, at least in my immediate family, was a pretty avid reader and is a pretty avid reader. There were a lot of bookworms in the house, all kinds of different genres, you know, just lots of interest in fiction in general. But I was the only one who really took to writing and who very much pursued it from a very young age. All those projects that I told you about, the writing projects, the script writing and the movie making and all of that, I was the only one who was very obsessed with it. There's a lot of artistic interest in my family, like we're all musicians, we've all, you know, we all play instruments. Um, a couple people in my family like to draw and are good at drawing, obviously not me, but I was the only one who was obsessed with writing. And last but not least, I have written a lot of different genres. I know all of those novels were fantasy. My long form writing has been dominated by fantasy, obviously, but I've written a lot of short stories. I've written a lot of just kind of side projects. I've started some different projects that I haven't really pursued, but the only genre that has really, really captured me and the one that I just feel like I have the most passion for and that I feel just the most at home in is fantasy. That's not to say that I'm not going to write a project or even a novel in a different genre. I would love to write a novel in a different genre. For the moment, I don't have any ideas that I really feel compelled to start and to try, but I am totally open to the idea. And if any of the ideas I've already had do become something that I really wanna write, I will absolutely write it. I'm not limiting myself to fantasy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just the genre that I like the most and I feel the most drawn to. It's the one I have the longest history with. I just love it. With that, I'm gonna wrap up this video. The little bit of sunlight I started filming with has completely gone. It's completely dark outside. So I probably have neighbors watching me record this right now, kind of wondering what I'm doing, talking to a camera, but that's okay. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found some of these fun facts or maybe all of these fun facts, at least a little bit interesting fun, perhaps. Definitely let me know in the comments below some of your own past fun facts about your writing background, how you started out, what you started out with, any funny stories you have from your early writing days. For my next video, I will plan something a little more craft focused. Definitely let me know in the comments if you have any special requests. And if you want to see another video about fun facts like this in the future, I would definitely be up for it. It's fun to kind of mix up the content on my channel with more lighthearted stuff, more kind of hopefully helpful stuff. And then of course the writing vlogs. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon. In another writing video.